Hey everyone, welcome to More Than Meets These Guys. This podcast is a journey through Transformers from the beginning of the animated series with two old friends coming at it from different perspectives. Together, they will go episode by episode with the occasional extra to look at how the show holds up or if it is a trap of nostalgia. They'll be looking at all things involved in the episode, whether there were real world factors that crept into the writing or if the episode was typical cartoon fodder. Evan, that's me. I'm a lifelong fan. I'm pretty much familiar with all aspects of the franchise uh, and the fandom from over the years. And uh, while Ed here, the other guy in the uh, video, was never really into Transformers, but, you know, he was something he's uh, open to learning more about as we go on. So anyways, welcome everyone for being here this week. Ed, how you doing? I'm exhausted, uh, but I'm doing great. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of traveling over the weekend, and uh, if you're not from the American South, the U.S. South, uh, as I know a lot of our listeners are not, I spent a lot of time in Louisiana, and uh, which which is, uh, if I'm not sure when this is going to drop, but uh, I spent St. Patrick's Day over there, which is sort of like, like the Mardi Gras hangover, which is it's like the you're you're, you're yeah. worn out after Mardi Gras, but you want to keep going to parades and keep uh, uh keep uh, getting into debauchery, which was which was a whole lot of that. Um, so uh, so yeah, that was what I've been doing over the over the past uh four days. So I'm 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 very tired, and uh, I was very I'm very excited to uh, stop doing that and to start watching dumb old cartoons from the eighties. Yeah, I've actually I've been to uh, St. Patrick's Patrick's Day in uh, New Orleans, and yeah, it definitely is that. It's it's still a uh, kind of a rough time, but it's it's fun. It's a rough time though. It is a bit of a, it is a bit of a rough time. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fine. It, it was fun. It was uh, you know, we kept we kept it pretty uh, kept it pretty uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> still, it was still, you know, it's still just you know, it's just a lot, a lot, of, a lot of driving. It was a, a whole lot of driving, and uh, but I you know, I got to see my mom and some friends and uh, cool. my sister. Oh, it was cool. Um, yeah. Uh, very nice very nice uh so yeah, yeah. man i uh we actually it's kind of cool the other day uh my son was in my son was in town with me and uh we uh we went uh saturday morning watched uh the new screen movie uh got oh, me feeble. yeah actually it was pretty good i i liked a lot i mean the thing is the reason i bring this up is uh you know there's that it, my franchise is purposely built to accentuate the tropes it's like okay here's typical horror movie tropes and we're going to basically, we're, we're it, it, I guess in a way, it accentuates them. It totally embraces them, and it tries to turn them on their head a bit. So, it was a fun movie. I mean, it was it was good. It was um just like a lot of the newer sequels of different movies, like the Halloween franchise. Mm -hmm. It's brutal at times, but it's also it's it still has a lot of that that same feeling, which is nice. Uh, so it got me thinking, you know, like um, and this actually plays into the episode. Uh, that we watched this week. What are some TV tropes or TV movie tropes that you could think of that work really well still? That hold on. Well, well, back up to to scream. The scream is scream is cool because it's a it's a deconstruction of horror films. Yes, and uh, so you know it, it examines those tropes and you know and kind of looks at why they work and why they don't work and whatnot, which is very cool. Um, but it's tropes that I like though. Um, you know, one this and this is a big. This happens a lot in in comic books, and uh, I always really dig this. It was a big uh, signature one of 1980s X Men of Chris Claremont era X Men, which is uh, one of my favorite eras of comics. Is when you have a team uh, of heroes, and then uh, or you know whoever, and you know like they, they they go on adventures and they have things happen, and then you know gradually they uh, you know bad things happen to them, and then they they gradually start start to split up, and they they splinter off into groups, and then they're completely split up, and then you know and and things are are really really bad, and you know like they're scattered all over the place, and then um, but what, what I love about that is it, uh, after you've spent the time to examine each character or each group of characters individually, then they they get back together, and they're always it's always kind of a big triumphant moment when they get back together like that. Like uh, and I miss in Star Wars, um, you, you know, like uh, the sort of Return of the Jedi is mm -hmm. is builds on that because it's what happened in The Empire Strikes Back. Um, uh, but yeah, I always yeah, I always always dug that because that that was one of my favorite eras of X Men was uh, leading up to. Um, uh, issue 275 was uh, like like Professor X was off world and um, uh, it's like Storm had been reborn as a child and uh, every, people had lost memories and uh, you know Wolverine had lost his healing factor and and all this stuff and then they all got, ended up getting back together and they rescued Professor X and all this stuff and it was it was, it was very good it was um, it was cool that's that is 
one that I that I'm always kind of a sucker for. I'm sure Teen Titans pulled it a few times. Um, I'm sure I'm sure every uh, Doom Patrol. I'm pretty sure pulled it at some point. So it, pretty much any team thing tends to, tends to do that. So. Yeah, I mean honestly, if you look at it that way, um, one of the biggest examples of that that everyone's probably seen to this point would be uh, Avengers Endgame. Right there at the end, everything you know is looks the bleakest, just like at the end of uh, Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. You know, you use a little radio signal that says on your left, and uh, here comes all of the teams through portals, you know, to you know fight Thanos and his army. And, you know, as much, you know, kind of flack as that movie gets for being just basically loud explosions and stuff, I, that that moment gets me every time. I yeah, see, the- you know... Uh, you know, uh, when we had Jason on uh, talking yeah. about the Michael Bay movie, he you know he mentioned that that you know he gets really emotional during that part. I don't have any memory of that of that scene. <laughs> Man, all. like I've seen I've seen in game, like I saw in game once. Yeah. And I have I have no memory of that. Maybe I should go back and watch it again. You know, know. It, it really it's it's one of those things that um, comes back. It brings around uh, back from um, you know from his first um, encounter with um, oh I think is in was it Winter Soldier where he first uh, starts um. You know, dealing Who's with Falcon. Who says it? Is it Falcon um, that says Falcon. that? Or... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, basically, I... he brings in all these de- desperate, um, okay. disparate parts of uh, the movies, all these teams mm-hmm. that you've been watching in different movies, and brings them all together for one big moment. Oh, cool. Okay. And you're just like, you're like, you want to you know, get up and catch, go, yeah, you know, cheer them <laughs> on. It just, it, it really, it brings all the emotions to a crescendo, and it's just really cool. Uh, you cool. know, in a lot of ways, um, <laughs> there's to me like the tropes that like work. To, in my opinion, when you have your hero at like a breaking moment, and you know he kind of like has that moment of, you know, let's say doubt, has to make a hard decision, and uh, you know you you basically like put it on the line kind of thing, and um, and this is going to get a lot of flack from uh, I know a lot of people didn't like this. Um, we'll eventually get to it during a uh, Transformers. Uh, this thing is Dark of the Moon. It was the third movie, which is probably by far the most brutal of them. Uh, there's the siege going on in Chicago and, um, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty bloody. And, uh, you know, Optimus Prime, he's supposed to be this paragon of, um, of purity. And he's the, he's the boy scout. He's Captain America in a robot body. Uh, mm-hmm. he'll, he just goes, we'll kill them all. And like, I'm like, Oh my God, he just had a moment. And, you know, you're, it's so departed from the classic version of that character. And it's it's done. I think a lot more now. It's more accepted now that you know characters that you don't expect to happen like that, they do something very against their character, but they they are doing it because they have to make a choice. They don't like that kind of thing. Um, I don't know what you would call it, sort of trope or that sort of um, that sort of kind of thing in, in a movie or show. But it's really you know you, people say well, that's not the character. Well, yeah, man. I I do things in every everyday life, but it came down to it. If things were bad. I might do something out of character also, just because you're you're trying to get that point. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that goes back to uh, also like Return of the Jedi again, where you know Luke's like tempted by the dark side. You know, you you, mm-hmm. you, you, get, that, you know, you get, you get tempted by the by the, the by the bad, and, and then you kind of you know you kind of bring it back. Um, uh, and that, that, that's always a good one. That was one that I was going to talk about as well. That's a, that's all. That one always works really well. Um, I'm, I'm also a big fan of when the uh, when of the doubt when the hero has the doubt, you know, and they uh, and you know that they're they have to over, they have overcome that. That's always a one that really works. Well, as part of the hero's journey, I think we have a doubt. That should be a part of the hero's journey, yeah. because if, if the hero thinks he's going to win the entire time, there's there's no stakes. Um, you know, yeah, obviously when Luke had that moment of, moment of doubt and he thought about you know the, the dark side's really a good you know maybe it's a not a pretty good deal. Um, and he's in the throne of the emperor. He's doing that, um, because I mean, essentially he's like well. You know, it would be easier. Um, you know, you have that doubt. Maybe what I've been fighting for against all this time, and maybe I can help my sister. And you have mm-hmm. that that idea, which you know, every hero uh, of the of a story, if they're a really a real flesh and blood, you know, three dimensional character, has to have a doubt. Which right. is just oh, not yeah. really, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, but you have any favorite things that subvert tropes? Um. I can't think of anything in the moment. I know I do. Um, I mean, besides, I mean, besides Scream. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, you have, I mean, really, that's, I feel like a lot of the things that we're seeing from uh, from the Blumhouse movies, they're trying to subvert tropes and turn things on their heads a bit. And uh, that's probably why they're so popular, why I like them a lot. Um, you know, I'm, 
if I if I thought of this ahead of time, it probably could have come up with something I'm <laughs> blanking in the moment. But you, let me <laughs> it's on you here. Uh, I watched uh, Knives Out this morning, and uh, oh, which yes. I, had, I ended up watching those out of order because uh, I I wanted to watch Glass Onion, and uh, I like Glass Onion a lot. But uh, Knives Out was really cool because um, uh, it, um, it, it was it was cool the way that they gave the the solution. It was a murder mystery, and they gave the solution away like a third of the way through the movie, but yeah. that didn't matter. Like it, it was it, it was cool the way they were like, oh well, well here's the here's what happened. And then they just build off of you know the, the what leads up to and the consequences of it instead of it instead of that being the pivotal the, the key piece of information. It's like oh well this is who did it and how they did it and what happened. But yeah. that's just but that's not important. You know that's uh, um uh you know I, I I like those kinds of things where that you know the yeah or that you know that it takes a it takes a turn where you're like wait a minute wait a minute this is <laughs> how, much, how how long is left in this movie and you're like oh wait a minute oh uh, there's a whole lot that's gonna happen. So I what? thought that was. Uh, Whenever I watched uh, Knives Out, I had the same thing. I, I, I we we watched it the first time, and we watched like like a quarter of it. And uh, my wife was just like, "No, nah, I'm not into this." So, okay, well, so we had later on a friend of mine, a friend of ours, rather, say, "That's one of my favorite movies. Go back mm-hmm. and watch it again." So we're like, "All right," so we got back and watched. We w- watched through it, and you realize that the whole point of the movie, the best part of the movie, is not um, the solution. I mean, it's, it's a puzzle. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's, not it's, at all. It's the family dynamics. How right. um, how crappy they are to each other. Who's mm-hmm. who has who has what in the in the fire? You know what? And really, you know, you get down the the, the end of it, you realize that this uh, this family is just it was a powder keg already. It was going to blow up at some point. And uh, this, even though you know, not, not going to give spoilers away to this, uh, who was what happened? But uh, you know, it was this whole thing like started the finger pointing really quickly. Right, just go watch it. I mean, if you haven't seen yeah. it, if you're out there and you're listening to you haven't seen it, just go watch it. It's, it's real right. good. Watch Glass Onion too. Also, oh good. yeah, I like. I think Glass Onion. I may have liked it a little better, but they, I, did, I, I think I did too. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think I did too. Um, it, like the, the cast in Glass Onion was really good, but oh, um, fantastic! Yeah, and they also the Glass Onion. Um, I think it's because uh, everything was really building to a crescendo with um with uh oh god uh owns Twitter Elon Musk, and the guy was essentially an Elon Musk clone. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought that was, uh, was yeah, yeah it's kind, that was kind, kind of topical in time. Well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but uh, but hey, man, Trader, uh, yes. Tra- Trader, season two, episode five, Transformers. Yes. So, uh, yeah. I, I gotta admit, I haven't watched this one in a long time either. Mm-hmm. One thing that struck me about this, it was really well animated. It was, yeah, it, it was, it was smooth. There wasn't any, there weren't any hiccups. Um, this one was written by some newcomers, though. So uh, we've got some fresh blood on the scene here. I don't know if you looked these guys up. Um, I did see their names. I didn't get a chance to look them up. Um, tell me a little uh, bit. George Hampton and Mike Moore, not Michael Moore, not the, not the, uh, what? very aggressive filmmaker Michael Moore, Mike Moore. Um, and uh, not a whole lot about these guys out there. Um, they both uh, looks like they were they were partners, I guess. They worked together on, on a lot of things. Um, they've got some uh, they got some credits from uh, about eighty four to ninety one. Um, some regular cartoon stuff. Um, uh, see, they they, uh, they wrote some police academy um get along gang stuff like that um they also wrote the the heathcliff cartoon so they're responsible for me getting to watch an hour and a half of uh cats eating fish skeletons off garbage can lids which you know i'm a a big fan of that i uh that's a trope that that i love um that was cool uh but they also did a show this weirdo sitcom i found called down to earth you ever you remember you ever heard of this one that Mm -hmm. rings a slight bell but i can't remember what that would be I, I it, it sounded familiar to me too, so I had to look it up. Um, so this show, and, and this wasn't what I remember it being, and I have no memory of this show, but I um, I both want to and don't want to look this up now because it sounds <laughs> both awesome and terrible. Um, this is a, a show. Uh, this is a sitcom about a flapper from the 1920s that gets run over by a trolley, and then she waits at the gates of heaven to get in because she they're not they don't they don't allow they don't you get you got to earn your wings this trope this the miracle on 34th street trope or mm-hmm. it's also like i think the meatballs three trope of uh you know the the angels got to come back down and help somebody do something to or you know to get the wings to get into heaven right this whole thing um so she comes back down to 1984 and helps a family just do family stuff i i I don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the thrust was or what the what the the, the gimmick was here outside of that. Okay. Um, 
but this is so like i was looking at the cast and i was like i don't know any of these people in this cast except this has dick Sargent in it really second, really? second darren from yeah uh, you witched um huh. and he's the dad in this and I'm like, huh? Well, so I was I was a big fan of Bewitched when I was a kid. I, I, I liked all those '60s sitcoms. Like I loved Bewitched and uh, I Dream of Genie and Gilligan's Island. I loved those shows because they, they, that was what I watched in the morning when I was a kid. Um, what yours was made? You know, '84, 1984. Yeah. Um, but see, the thing is, this show ran 93 episodes. The show ran three seasons. Where was- he? Dick Sargent did more episodes of this show about a dead flapper than he did of Bewitched. <laughs> he did 10 more episodes of this show than he did of Bewitched. That's, that's pretty impressive, man. I <laughs> never heard of this show, but... I never heard of it either. And uh, mm-hmm. apparently the, uh, the theme song is absolutely awful. And uh, But yeah, <laughs> this was... It ran on um, on, on TBS uh, Channel 7. If you had, I'm sure it was Channel 7 on everybody's cable back in the day. Yeah, um, so I was a big fan of this. Yeah, I was a big fan of TBS because they they had uh, they had the new Leave It to Beaver, which I was a I was a fan of, and they also had uh, uh, WCW wrestling, NWA wrestling back then at six oh five. Everything was yeah. remember everything was at oh five. Remember that? So we used to they used to have um I think, no I'm thinking WGN Chicago. I think they used to have Transformers and GI Joe in the afternoons, except during baseball season. During baseball season, uh, it was, people it was Cubs. It, yeah, it was Cubs all day all day long. Yeah, TBS was yeah. all Atlanta Braves. Yeah, that's right. That's Cubs. right. That's right. WGN had uh, the Bozo show, though. You watched the, oh, yes, it did. The grand prize game. You win some, win some archway cookies and a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. God, that seems to back a little bit. They play, 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 play beard pong, and uh, you can win prize. They play beard pong, and you got archway cookies if you got to the third one. And you got to number 10, you got a, you got a, a, a huffy bicycle. Every, every no wonder people are so good at uh, beer pong now. They watch the Bozo show growing up. <laughs> Everybody want to play the grand prize game. Oh, my God. So we started right, this, drink. this one. Oh, uh, so... We so, the, we'll get the Hall of Justice. Yeah, it does look like this. The, we'll uh, the what I, I thought I was going to write down what this place is called, but basically it was a secret, you know, experimental lab or whatever with a big across the front experimental lab facility, the experimental energy uh, research lab. The, the yes. Earl, the E E R L, the Earl. <laughs> and there, these two guys are in there working on electro cells. They will solve all the Earth's energy problems, yeah. but they could explode at any moment. Oh my God. So, okay. So being a, a, any sort of energy scientist has yeah. to be the highest risk job in all of the Transformers universe. Seriously, man. Like, that's more point? dangerous than, than policeman, soldier, uh, that those dudes that, that climb towers to face cell phone towers, oh, more man. dangerous because, because you're a, in constant threat of getting attacked by Decepticons. Well, the problem is Every, they're doing it at the Hall of Justice. They should have been doing it underground right? somewhere. They should have been underground. They should have. They yeah. should have been exactly. They should have been underground. Um, Speaking of this, though, um, what's that? Oh, these guys are doing science stuff, and uh, of course, right on cue, here's uh, Starscream and Skywarp ripping the ripping the top off the building to but come take. Do you stuff. notice how carefully they open the dome? They're like taking care. They break it open, and they're like taking a piece and placing it aside. Well, they didn't want to. They didn't want to damage the uh, the electro cell. Once again, yeah. I mean, Starscream is a scientist. He's like, oh, okay, this is real, real powerful stuff. Let's move it yeah, over he here. He's he uh, he, like, it, it's he, a gift. It's a yeah. gift for Megatron. It's like I'm gonna have a gift for Megatron here. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. So it's a gift for Megatron. He places the piece of the dome aside, and Megatron shows up, just livid with him too. Dude, he is. He he's t- he's he's taken he's taken even more of a nosedive. He's he's become terrible. He's a little unhinged. He's more terrible than he has been. Yeah. Yeah. He's a terrible <laughs> leader. Uh, so they they hijack this thing, and uh, Megatron talks about wanting to go back and write the book of Decepticon supremacy. Yes, and yeah. Write the book. He's yeah, write uh, the book. he has his own little mind comp in mind, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so if one of these cells detonates, according to the scientists, it could start a chain reaction. Or no, to the I think it's a uh, Starscream. Starscream or Megatron says this. It could start a chain reaction that could devastate the Earth. And Okay, cool, guys. So I guess we're gonna throw. They're gonna carry this in the air for uh, you know hundreds of miles. It'll be, it'll be fine, you know. Uh, planes hit birds all the time, but we're, we're, it's it's fine. We'll, we'll we'll just carry carry this carefully through the air. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, what is go, we're going to the Autobots real quick after that old scene? Cliff Jumper is so ready to throw blame around. Dude, he's a, he's a total hater. He throws mirage right under the bus in a he second is just like 
well, like I found some stuff from Mirage, didn't find anything. And, yeah, uh, this he, dude is the worst. And he was there uh, yesterday, and I, I was there today. I was there, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Optimus Prime gets uh, he gets a little indignant here, and he tells him to stop because he doesn't want any uh any hurt feelings. Well, and yeah. uh. Yeah. Which well, I guess we've established this is like the second time in a couple of episodes that we've established that that some people some transformers have feelings some transformers do not have feelings. Was often probably very concerned about Autobots' feelings, but said the Decepticons are unfeeling monsters in that one like yes. in, like the last episode. So yeah, yeah, he, real, he did. Yeah, he's real on the emotional uh, on, the, on the emotional uh, thing here. So, um, but yeah, dude, yeah, dude, um, Cliff Jumper is awful. He, he's he's pissed about something i don't know if mirage like stole his girlfriend drink his uh drink his his fago or something in the fridge it was it was bad he's just all over this guy and um so yeah there's this whole back and forth though, with all that and you realize there's you know this they're kind of setting up the idea that cliff jumper is pissed at mirage about something but so but after that whole scene we go back to um to the septicons and they're sitting there with their um their electro cell production facility plant thing it's like is that assembly line with like uh energy cubes with wires sticking into it and the electro cells i guess are in there somewhere and I, yeah I, I think that the electro cell from what i get i, I think is like a like like that like transfers the energy right yeah something like that from, i don't know where they get the energy from here's the thing though but see th this whole episode is just about internal strife oh yeah yet another yet another trope, trope. Another, mm -hmm. another trope here but starscream just goes on about how like well, if i was in charge we would, <laughs> would have already filled up the insurance cubes and if you did the autobots and so but but see megatron <laughs> megatron cuts him off here and he's like well i'm in charge so basically he just takes the whole blame that nothing's getting done yeah he's like well i'm in charge so no, that none of that's happened <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much just, just by the, the way whole. There is this great, there's this like uh, this like camera pan shot going around Starscream and uh, Megatron. Like, you know, um, you, you, of course you have it in movies or you know, live film. You see it a lot in uh, like high budget anime. Well, they'll, they'll do this camera pan around the uh, characters. Yes, you, like say something. you are correct. And there were, a, there were a couple of these, a couple of yeah. shots like there, there's one coming up in a little bit that I'll, uh, that I'll talk about, but um... they, were, they were actually really nicely done. I mean, they're nice shading on the, the characters, mm -hmm. like the, uh, we're talking about uh, season two has a lot of bad animation. This one had a lot of really good animation. Like they they outsource half of this episode to somebody who did it like a who this is like their baby for the week. <laughs> they they cleaned it up nicely. Um, so we have a uh, you know something like uh yeah he basically Starscream went from being a really good scientist to a really bad one. Like you said, and this in, internal strife going on with Megatron, and there's this kind of back and forth you know needling he does, and he. Of course, he fills up a cube, and you know it, it's all going critical and stuff. You know, we like we expect to happen totally. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Of course, they're yeah, they're they're overloading, and uh, yeah, this is yeah, it's not good. And, um, so yeah, the Autobots show up at this point. Cliff Jumper is still mm -hmm. throwing shade at Mirage. And, oh, but, yeah. you know, I'm almost like I'm almost kind of on the side here because like, as long as we've been watching this show now, I don't know that Mirage has done anything. <laughs> like, the one thing in the uh the original um like like miniseries for the show he uh he snuck on the uh, on ship. and snuck onto the ship right yeah but uh right. it's, it's kind of like was he just trying to go home was like i'll just get a ride home or is he actually there to stop him it's, oh that was him wasn't it i yeah. totally forgot about that yeah that's right so yeah yeah this this guy's done nothing since then though this guy had one ace moment in mm -hmm. like episode three and now he hasn't done anything since then so like i have no use for this guy and so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go ahead and go team clip jumper here. So yeah, at this point, yeah. Um, so I, I, okay. Uh, full disclosure, uh, we we both I, I watched this episode like a week ago and made my notes and stuff, and uh, I got really sick for the week, so I, I'm like looking back at my notes, going, what what is this? I it put in quotes, not so fast, Papa. What is so, that? Okay, so yeah, this this was a good this was a good line. So um, uh, so the Autobot show up. Uh, Cliff Jumper goes to take the uh, the, the electro cell. Come to Papa, and he goes, "Come to Papa." <laughs> and Starscream is behind him with a blaster, and he's all like, "Not so fast, Papa." And then, so, then he's like, "Have you ever heard of not taking things that don't belong to you?" And so they have this this quick little conversation about ownership and uh, and how much possession is uh, associated with ownership. Keep that in mind because that's going to come back in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more to that. Um, 
So meanwhile, we cut to Mirage and Skywarp, who have the worst fight of all time oh, here. They um, look like they're trying so hard to connect with punches or something, and it looks terrible. Were, yeah, they were like like squaring up and like kind of like almost like sumo wrestling, but it was like a draw. And then Skywarp like almost gets um uh mirage into a full nelson like he's billy jack haynes from wrestling <laughs> but so mirage like flips him but then mirage goes for a full mount but he doesn't know jujitsu so he's terrible he doesn't know what to do so he just kind of lays it on top of him and uh, <laughs> yeah, he uh, does it, it was yeah but oh but here we go this, this, this is cool for like three seconds here we got the insecticons come back finally after so like, show for guys, great plot convenience where have they been what have they been doing yeah. They, they kind of do their own thing. They hang, hang out in their own base and they go like, I guess, eat crops and stuff and get up shenanigans. They probably like, you know, play, play uh, you know, I guess uh, Nintendo or something together and they, or maybe Atari. Know, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're in that, because weren't they in like, like Malaysia or something like that? Or uh, Yeah, Japan? uh Bali? Bali? Something Bali. like that? Yeah, it was. That's uh, right, because yeah, we have a swap of Bali. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're over there playing combat with each other all day. On the Atari, Atari Warriors, maybe I don't, I don't know. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so Optimus Prime and Megatron have they continue this discussion about ownership and possession, and uh, they're, they're going about how well you don't take things that don't belong to you, which Starscream just said. So both both sides have said the same exact thing, mm -hmm. and Megatron talks about how because he he possesses it that, that it he owns it. This yeah. is ownership, and this is uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm having a real hard time sussing out you know who's uh, who's a Marxist here and who's not. <laughs> um, but in, in, in the middle in the middle of this here comes a robot grasshopper he flies through and he just zaps optimus prime with some like lasers from antennas and optimus yeah. prime has zero points in armor once again like just takes his <laughs> and he's so canonically these antenna laser from what's it what's this guy's name kickback kickback yeah kickback um yeah, canonically that's that's got to be in the hierarchy of of in the most powerful of the transformers weapons they're they're has to be um, up there with wheeljack's cannon and and uh um what's his name uh megatron's arm cannon yeah huh? I, I guess so yeah so um the electro cells start going up and apparently um megatron randomly has nitrogen for a fire retardant you know not, not something i saw happening but yeah, here we are um, did, you, did you notice here that um uh yes this yes while this episode was uh technically pretty well animated uh when he comes up to put the fire out um he, there's two seekers there he knocks one of them aside and but both of them are star screen <laughs> nice he knocks, he, he knocks two star screens out yeah get out of the way and knocks, they, they and knocks the guy out and uh but, yeah um, mirage is obviously yeah. not doing well in his little fight what's that but mirage is not doing well he grabs like he grabs a piece of uh sky warp like his insignia <laughs> it was so weird okay it's like <laughs> a screen he's, got, he's holding the screen print <laughs> yeah it was it was really weird uh it would have been cooler though if it was one of the like weren't the so didn't the toys after a while have like the heat reactive uh, yeah, yeah yeah the uh rub, it'd be cooler if it was like that where you had to put your hand he had to like put his hand <laughs> over it rub it you know like uh, like battle beasts remember, remember battle beasts yep. they were actually uh the battle beasts were included in the um in the uh, transformers line over in japan during the headmasters really? show yeah it was a uh, the planet of the beast oh no kidding dude battle beasts yep. were cool they were kind of um, canonically tied to him yeah so yeah, the fight kind of ends, and uh, they go back to base. Uh, uh, Optimus Prime's like, we get, we got to take off. We, uh, we'll, we'll regroup and come back. Essentially, the, the subtitles here are called the Electro Cells, Electoral Cells. Like they were like, like, like election style, electoral? like the electoral, yeah, like the Electoral College. They, they oh, they said they called them the Electoral Cells. Ah, that, that's where all the uh, those uh, those lost uh, ballots are, huh? Right. Yes. Yeah. That's where <laughs> uh, Dominion is uh, running the. Uh, yes. yeah, using, uh, Shh, dude, they they sue. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> so they're back at base and like uh, it, Ratch is working on um, Mirage and he basically tells him to get rest and he's like I don't need rest and he opens his hand he's holding the screen print in his hand like what's that all about yeah. it, you, you don't know yet is, is he is he a traitor we don't know this was yeah this was so weird man um, so, yeah so he he transforms and he he drives over to the Decepticon or the Insecticons base, Insecticon base yeah which which like were they in like where are they if you can just drive well, over there they're up to um they're up to shenanigans i don't know maybe he um he's driving to bali i mean obviously you can make it from like you know um eastern oregon or washington to bali pretty quick you know if you maybe yeah maybe he flew in robot form over there and then, <laughs> and then went to the, car the jet pack and took off 
he jet packed, he jet packed over there, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it just seemed like it was like right there. Um, yeah. But see, but, no, no, but hold on, hold on, hold on, though, because here's the thing: it, it had to be close. It had to be close because the next thing that we see, he, he, okay, well, this that jumps forward a little bit, but so he he turns invisible and goes in and steals energon cubes from mm-hmm. the insecticons, but yeah. he drops yeah. the scrap of of sky warp on the ground. Mm-hmm. He drops like and screen print, yeah, his screen print. His his t shirt, his, his, his NWO <laughs> t shirt. He drops it on the ground and to, to frame yeah. the NWO. Uh, <laughs> That's a great trip. I love that too much. I love this, it too much, man. Like, this is, I'm going to leave like a, this G.I. Joe patch on the ground. That way, they'll think G.I. Joe did this to mm-hmm. them. Yeah, that's all that whole thing. So, but th- this guy is like just so in discord between the bad guys, though, which is which is rare. You don't see that a whole lot. Yeah, you know, he, he's actually, it's, it's a pretty good idea, honestly. You uh, put the Insecticons and the Decepticons against each other and, you know, uh, create a division. So mm-hmm. not a bad idea, but... Yeah, the Centicons are mad about this, but, oh, but, it, but anyway, so Mirage goes back to the Ark, though, but there's, okay, but up on the cliff there, it's Cliff Jumper, he sees them coming back, and he's all like, oh, Mirage is oh, working yeah, for the Decepticons. So he oh, knew, new gun. somehow he knew that they, where he had gone, so he followed it, so they couldn't have been that far away, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so uh, Honestly, maybe they, they moved their base to um, the Everglades, I don't know. <laughs> so, they weren't even really in the in the swamp or anything though they were just in kind of like a, a temperate zone i don't know it was weird Maybe, you know uh, well, honestly oh, the whole that whole area up there in the valley of the cascades is technically a uh a rainforest so oh yeah oh maybe maybe, maybe, maybe they're there um yeah, yeah. so cliff jumper aims his uh, aims his gun here mm-hmm. and when he does this there's a cool like uh like the sun uh, there's like a like a glint on the barrel or whatever mm-hmm. this is what i was saying earlier about the uh the cool anime uh like like anime things um it's something you see in like in like a more modern anime that that's a, yeah. that's a pretty i feel like it's a modern uh, thing to do you'd see it in like uh like trigun or uh mm-hmm. like cowboy bebop or something like that 100%. um it's, it's it's a thing that only works in animation like you can't see this in like um uh, like i don't know like saving private ryan or something like you 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 can't see that in, in, in or like smoking aces that doesn't work in those movies it has to, it has to be animated so you can yeah you know, animate the glint of the thing on there or whatever but um yeah, it like was cool though What's that? A little John Wick action with some uh, fluorescent it, yeah, light so... on it. <laughs> I don't think that would even work in John Wick, though. No. As much as I love John Wick, but uh... so I had this uh, this this the note I hear. I guess I'm watching the episode. And I said, okay, Roger's plan is pretty simple, but Cliff Jumper is an idiot. So yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> so he's he he found him out. He sussed out the traitor, and here we are. But uh, so did you catch this? Like Shrapnel's um. They, they get pissed off and they go after the Decepticons. So they're hiding behind a rock and uh, Shrapnel has a line, which he repeats the last word like they do. And uh, it's not modulated. So it sounds like a guy whispers to himself. <laughs> I did. I did. sounds so weird. I, I, yeah, I, I, did catch, I did catch that. Like, um, this, this guy like muttering to himself behind a trash can somewhere like, uh, <laughs> big, deep state, deep state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very much what it was. So, like, the Insecticons are basically like the Decepticons version of the of the Dinobots. Like, they're problem children. Like, they're oh, yeah. like, like, like like John Ritter can't corral these kids correctly. <laughs> they're, uh, they're they're out of control. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I love it. There's this fight that ensues. Kickback loves screaming out "Hi Oz" when he attacks. <laughs> Hi ya! The Sky Warp. Dude, those voices were were very cool. Um, so they, they, but they, they take over Mirage here, though. They uh, one of them like puts yeah. a like a mind control thing on his forehead. Bombshell has these things that you'll they'll come up again. They're, they're I guess they're the name for them in the show is Cerebro shells. You know, okay. considering they're they're brain controlling things, so yeah. Cerebro kind of works. Um, there's this great pan on Mirage's face during this time too, when he gets like hit in the forehead with these um these cere- the Cerebro shell Cerebro shell. And um, so, okay, apparently my phone started talking to me. Sorry, let me turn that up back over here. <laughs> okay, Siri, I'll, we'll talk to you later. Uh, so, <laughs> see, there's this uh, this scene where they uh, they they get Mirage and uh, I uh, was it Cliff Jumper who says something about his cyber polygraph. So yeah, something like that. There was a lot of like gobbledygook there for a second. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I couldn't my I couldn't cyber really polygraph. All yeah but massages wound so this yeah whole... oh go ahead oh it's like this mirage's wound and like we'll care for it later kind of thing but you know 
they, there's this, this whole fight that happens and you know of course they all think now like oh no mirage is actually turned on us mm-hmm. he has not noticed in this hole in the middle of his forehead i think someone it was, real, man, it, was, it was real small it was the same color as his forehead too man it, it blends right in from a distance yeah. You can't yeah. have time to analyze that, but Mirage's shoulder missile is real powerful. Like he shoots somebody oh, yeah. and just totally takes him out. Like, like, yeah. but, but it also reloads itself somehow. I don't know how, I don't know where he carries extra missiles, but it just reloads itself, um, which That's is pretty great, cool. Man. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So that, yeah, then they fight it off and then, um, yeah. And then this episode just kind of what happened next? Like they just kind of ended. Yeah. I think Ratchet find, finds out that he's like, "Hey, hold on, there's uh, something going on with this forehead," and they, they find out the the front of the mm-hmm. shell, and it like falls out. Yeah, the Zepticons fly away, and then uh, the next, the end scene of this is, um, I guess, Clump Chopper and Mirage have, have made up at this point, and they're like <laughs> rolling really around weird. and tickling each. They're tickling each other all, all over the arc. <laughs> yeah. um, this is so odd, man. Um, oh god. Um, so. <laughs> uh, but by the way, the, the end of that fight, um, uh, Megatron gets so peeved at the whole thing with the uh oh, with man. the uh, electric shells he just starts blowing it up and he's, he's just he's, but he's, the, he's, the explosions are once again very anime level explosions they're really good looking explosions uh just he's just he's done he's he's over it he wants to move on but yeah so they go back to base and uh there he repairs from raj and uh cliff jumpers just starts laughing he sounds just like shaggy when he does it too he well, it's, just... it's, it's Casey Kasem, right? Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So he just starts laughing. It sounds just like Shaggy. He and uh, he goes, I think I think I'm a hole in my head and he's repairing too. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they're, t- and they're tickling each other and they're rolling all over. They're rolling all over oh, the yard. Everything's better now. Oh, we're all good. Okay. Everyone's forgetting. So, uh, and, that, and that was the end. Uh, hey, so, hey, so is there a, a series? Like, I, I think I saw where, like, like The Rock voices cliff jumper is that, is that a thing for the first uh episode or two it was on a uh, transformers prime yes prime okay yeah it's actually what really was that what's that from when is that one from? uh that was uh was a around the 2010 maybe oh in, so uh, before he was 2010 okay. maybe, maybe 2010 2015 somewhere in that area i'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'll, I'll look it up later but it's it's pretty pretty new um but yeah it, it ended uh, it probably ended about 10 years ago so uh, yeah, it was really nice animation. It like took um some designs from classic Transformers and kind of merged them a little bit with the uh, the Michael Bay style you know uh, look, kind of gave mm-hmm. it a nice merger. Okay. Really nice animation, really nice um you know stylized CG show. Okay, is it so, good? Yeah. Oh, it's great, actually. Highly recommended. Um, got you know some dark in some areas and um funny in the other areas. They did a good job with it. Uh, a lot of really good voice actors in there actually. Um, it was re- the original Peter Cullen and uh, Frank Welker doing Optimus Prime and Megatron. Okay. So, yeah, it was probably where like a lot of the budget went. <laughs> but um, it was an expensive show for them to make, so they didn't uh, they didn't go past I think a season three. Which, okay. Yeah, too bad. I guess I according to them that never made money. So whatever. But I would definitely check it out. It's a good show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, it it was one of those throwaway episodes, but on the other hand, it was it was pretty good it wasn't there's was nothing wrong with it man like who cares uh it was bland um to oh, me okay. me anyway i thought it was bland like nothing stood out at all um i mean it, the, the the traitor trope is is cool mm-hmm. but I, like I, I, I don't know i mean none of the battles in this were i thought were any good um <laughs> right, like, really bad like it, yeah, I mean, and there was nothing really to, to latch onto. I mean, you didn't really get you got you got the return of these Acticons, which was cool. Like nobody new showed up. Nothing really. I, I don't know. Like if, if if I never saw if if I had never seen this one, period, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't miss it. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, kid, kid brain's gonna have to go like two and a half plain potato chips, like plain what? potato chips, just yellow bag lays. Two of those. Two two and a half of those. That's it. Wow. That's, um, that's that's rough so there's like ruffles. yeah i don't like oh i don't i don't like plain potato chips is the thing like um man like, I, I don't like if i'm at somebody's house and they're like hey man you want some snacks i'm like yeah i'll have, I'll have a snack and they're like i bought some chips and they just pull out some, like, like a bag of lays and like with no dip or like vinegar <laughs> or ketchup or something like that and i'm you like are. man come on come on man you gotta you gotta up the ante here you gotta give me you gotta give me something this is this chip is just a vehicle for for something yeah. else, I feel like, like if th- if this episode had had been a vehicle to to bring me something else, like a like a cool, 
like new character or or something like that, it would be a little better. Um, adult brains just go in one plain potato chip, really? not even a, not even a ruffles, not 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 even ridged. Like that, that's 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 better than nothing. Like man, like an unsalted chip almost. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, just just nothing. To, there was just nothing to care about. This was my thing. It wasn't bad. It it, it wasn't like you know mm-hmm. the, those ones where we watch and we're like, man, that was just oh my god, the animation was terrible and 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 this was <laughs> stupid. And but you know we're we're dying laughing at it. And yeah. you know or you know we had a lot to talk about. Like this one, I like I feel like we I feel like we've been talking for like five minutes because there was just nothing to like dig into <laughs> on this one. Um, right. and we just came off of arguably two of the coolest episodes. <laughs> Of the series of dinosaurs in it. like like I, like I, there there weren't any cowboys in this there wasn't a cowboy yeah. charge yeah i didn't have a, a woolly mammoth i didn't have a, a, a barbarian shouting gibberish any one of those <laughs> things w- would have upped this one it, it would have it would have uh, maybe given me like a, a like a, a barbecue chip at least but this is just plain this is plain old chips dude like Not even dill pickle ooh. chip huh that dill pickle chips, some zaps voodoo chips or something. Oh, Give me something delicious. That's that's that's, that's high praise there. Zaps voodoo chips. That's that's, that's that's my favorite chip. Yeah, well, because they're delicious. They are delicious. Which your favorite chip? You got a favorite chip? Mm. Uh, I don't want to pick the same ones you did. Um, I don't know. I, I, it'd be, actually, I tell you what, like kettle baked. Um, like there's a there's just like this hard like thick. I like this sometimes. Yeah. Um, sour cream and onion. I, there's, it's like a, it's, I don't know, the Snyder's. It's, a, it's a, it's a brand. I like. I could eat a whole bag of this, like when sitting without even thinking about it. Because oh, the hairs or hairs or whatever they're airs, whatever they're called. Yeah, oh, I recognize really them at the store. Yeah, they're like, they're like, they're, they're, oh, they're, they're like thick. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't like those paper thin ones, like the Lay's. Uh, just no. You know. No, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you, you the zaps are also thick. Those things. You, know, you just you, you get the dip and it just, it just breaks it. Yeah, Zap. Sorry about the, the, the tangent for the chips, but what did you think of this episode? What was your? What was your <clears> I think I'm a little more forgiving on this. Um, well, the thing is, I come from this, come to this episode already knowing about some of the things that are coming up. So, cerebral cells are happening a lot. So, I got to give it a little credit for st- starting up that whole thing where, you know, when it's convenient, um, the Insecticons start controlling people, mind controlling, which I always love that. That's it's a great old sci-fi trope, mind control. Oh love yeah. That. So that right there made me be a little softer on it. So I, I got to give it that. That's not really anything that that really helped the episode a lot. I love the animation. The, the animation of this episode. There were these great camera pans on different characters. Um, so I mean, it wasn't it wasn't something to laugh at. No, but I mean, laughing at the weird parts of the episode, like the fight between Skywarp and uh and uh the Mirage and oh like, dear God, it was all that oh last God. minute of them like having this tickle fest. It's just weird, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a great one, but also it had some. I think some better points than you, you maybe. In my opinion, I think you you know give credit for. So uh, I'm gonna give it. I'll, I'll still give it a two, but I'm gonna give it a two, possibly explosive electro cells out of five. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, see, possibly possibly explosive. Possibly, you could it start a chain reaction. You could blow it up start a chain reaction. Or- yeah, that, um, there's there's a trope right there that that uh, I, I I you know back in the day that was a big deal chain reaction you know like Star Wars kicked that off like what's the chain like you know you're five you're like what's a chain reaction I have no idea but uh, yeah that's, that's that's bad whatever it is is bad so yeah hundred percent right uh, so yeah no, yeah just once again I mean I liked it uh, I would think I was a little more forgiving than I thought I was going to be I think that's probably one of the reasons why I, I was a little nicer about it because I. I I seem to remember really not liking it, but like, oh, that's that's not terrible. Okay, I could deal with that. So there, there's that it, probably. I think it's just middle of the road is the, is the thing. Like I said, like I said, I didn't think it was bad. It just it just didn't really. I don't know. It was just kind of unremarkable. I guess is the best way to yeah. it. It was uh, it, it was pretty much a filler. Yeah, had out that 49 episodes. Oh my god, 49 <laughs> episodes. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Hey, you are. <laughs> Splitting more beer. Um. <laughs> So we got it here, and uh, I just want to say, everyone, uh, thank you for uh, being here. And uh, please check out on the show notes the link to the Discord. Um, it's small but growing. Um, we got, got some cool people there. We join up every week. Uh, I think people are like kind of checking it out or thinking about joining. Why not join? It's easy, you know. Just, join, just it's cool. It, yeah, if I can cool. figure out Discord, you can figure out Discord. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's cool. It's, it's it's not just for the youngs. Uh, the olds can use it too, um, yeah, as can. I've proven. Um, I have not been very active in the Discord the past few days, as I've been uh, otherwise uh, occupied. But um, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna type right now. Right now, I'm gonna type. Oh, okay. Uh, type you can give right us, 
And if you see this on YouTube, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, it helps get you yeah, know, people yeah, uh, yeah, showing up in people's feeds. Also, um, if you have, you have a podcast app, you know, where you read the show notes, give it like a five star rating if you wouldn't mind. Uh, it'd be amazing and help others come across us. I know people have come across us just by browsing, which is really great. So uh, if those you have are, a friend, stop. I, oh, I, yeah. I love I love hearing that people that just like I just wanted to hear Transformers podcast and found you guys so awesome yeah, Glad super cool it. um, um yeah. and if you know if you have a friend you think might like it send them a link you know say hey check this out it's you know give give it give it fifteen minutes for it to get good no I'm kidding uh it's um I th- I think it's it's good man uh I, if you just try to you know let people know what's going on and uh, we appreciate everything like that so if you just want to send an email if you're real shy. Um, you can send an email to more than meets these guys at Gmail or at hates transformers at Gmail as well. So that is my blurb at the end. And so I want to say thanks everyone for being here today. Uh, Ed, you want to take us out with anything? Uh, um, you picked the wrong, wrong planet. Give me your face. <laughs> we, we saw that. <laughs> What's Michael that? Movie. <laughs> it's such a, it's such a great it's, bad line. <laughs> it's uh yeah. Um, um yeah, that was a that was a it was a, was a weird one. Give me Pull your off. face. All right, yeah. guys. Thank you for being here. Y'all have a great week. Roll yeah. out. Thank you, Roll. man. See you.